Um, I'm going to start off with a small PowerPoint. I hate PowerPoints myself. I've lived through hundreds of the, the things and uh, dislike them intensely. But it does add some structure, and I will just go through the structure, and then we'll look at live charts. Because I really want to share with you uh, my journey in trading, what I've found, and what, uh, what works for you, particularly understanding volume. So let's start this. I'm sorry that uh, we're a bit late, so I'll rattle through this and catch up on time so I won't hold back the other, other uh, uh, presenters coming in. First of all, there's a normal disclaimer. If you don't like this, please leave. You know, this is just education. We're not licensed to give trading advice, nor do we wish to. So the agenda today is introducing you to volume. I'm sure that all of you understand volume or you've seen volume, but you haven't really worked out what it is and how to get a grasp on it. I'll be showing you the application of volume. I'll be showing you the closing thoughts. And the closing thoughts are really important because that's when the Q&As come in. Although I can't hear them, I can see them and I can respond to them. So just bear with me, everybody. It's a, it's a, a big room here today. So let me rattle through and you've all come in to be educated and to be shown something that I hope will change the way that you trade forever. And the question and answers are really important. So in traditional trading, you've got to remember 70 to 80 percent of traders are failing. And we've got to ask why. You know, why are traders failing? There's many answers. One of the big ones is that traders don't do enough on their mental uh, strength in trading. And secondly, traders choose the wrong time frames. But that is a whole nother conversation. And if any of you come into the Hawkeye rooms, you'll hear me talking about that later. Um, the main reason is that they're using traditional indicators, the MACD, Stochastics, Bollion, Jabans, Elliott Waves. They're all, if you like, old indicators that have been around a long time. They're curve-fitting uh, the market. And they really don't work at all. And I haven't seen anybody that has consistent profits with those strategies because they're all trend-following. And of course, markets only trend for about 30% of the time. The rest of the time, they go into their congestion mode. So that's when everybody gets beaten up. And you must know, why is volume so important? Well, let me just tell you. It is the only leading indicator out there. I don't know many of, if many of you have read Reminiscences of a Stock Trader, that great old book has been around, telling you about the traders back in the 1930s working out of the uh, uh, bucket shops just trading. And all they saw was the ticker tape coming across on volume. That's all they had, that volume leading indicator. How many of you have been down to the Merck in Chicago? If you go down there and you watch the neon lights go round the pits, you know, they've got the open, the high, the close, the bid, the offer, the ask, if you like, in America. In, in, in a font size, but double the font size is the volume going through. Because the boys on the floor know how important it is to see volume. It is the only leading indicator. It signals the price move before it happens. And I will be going into charts and showing you more and more charts as this uh, uh, um, PowerPoint uh, virtually comes to an end. And it won't last that long before we look at our live charts. Uh, it signals market intent. It just shows you you've got to understand market structure when you're a trader. You know, this isn't like just betting on the horse races. This isn't the 3.30 at uh, uh, Kentucky or whatever it might be, Leamington if you're Australia, you know the Epson and if, if, if you're English. This is a skillful this discipline that you have to learn how to trade. And it shows you market intent. It shows you market structure. All markets have structure. I don't care. They get out of kilter. Think what a market can do. Particularly with stocks, it has price accumulation of fair value. Prices then move up out of fair value, they then have distribution, they then return back to fair value, which is normally higher than the previous fair value, accumulation goes on, so on and so forth. The whole market has structure. And that's what Elliot saw when he was looking at markets. markets. He saw the uh, one, three, fives, the, the, the zigzags, and saw market structure. And that's what market does. It shows you, or volume does, it shows you the market 
uh, structure. And in my opinion, and I'm happy to debate it with anybody, all other indicators are lagging. And when you put volume on triple time frame, I've got to tell you, boys, you're off to the races. That's when the aha moment finally kicks in and you know that you have a handle on the randomness of price. Do you hear what I said? The randomness of price. Because all that you're doing is taking random price, smoothing it into a time frame, then putting your indicators on, double, tripling, smoothing that, and then looking at it, putting it across three other time frames. Suddenly, you're double, tripling, quadrupling, smoothing. When you put volume on triple time frames, I have to tell you, you have the DNA of the market. So let me just tell you a little bit about my journey. I won't bore you too much in this. But I became a trader by default. I started off when I left school. I went to work for the Times newspaper in London and the Sunday Times in London. And out of that, I started my own publishing business. I had 300 odd people working for me. And I sold that. And I actually was uh, invited to join the America's Cup team, you know, the, the uh, big sailing race. And I went out to Australia, where it was being uh, held there in Perth in Australia, and uh, uh, was a director of the British team. But before I did that, I invested a six-figure sum with a stockbroker. I knew nothing about it. But I met this guy at a drinks party in London, and he sold me. He said, you know, we can turn this and make this three times the worth and what have you. Well, when I came back over lunch, he told me I lost it all, and I had to pay for lunch. And I thought he cheated me. And I thought, hmm, I've got to learn what he did. And in those days, it was before the computer. I used to do this all by hand. My goodness, it makes me sound such an old man. But I started to do this by hand on graph paper, and I started to trade gold predominantly. And I was terrible. I was so bad that if my logic was telling me to buy something, I sold it because I was wrong far more times than my analysis told me I was right. So what do I do? You've got to realize you've got to be a loser first. And being a loser first, losing that money is your entrance into the club. You know, it's just like being an apprentice. If you're an apprentice carpenter, carpenter, you hit your thumb with a hammer as you're trying to put nails in. If you're, a, if, 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 if you're an electrician, a, an apprentice electrician, what happens? You get belt from the electricity. If you're learning how to trade, you have to lose. Very interestingly, most traders get through two and a half times the account size that they first started before they walk away from being a trader. So they put 10 grand in. They put another 10 grand in, they scrape and save another 5,000 from the family who love them to bits, and they put another 5 grand in, and it doesn't work, and off they go. Had they put in the 25 grand to begin with, they would have probably done a little bit better because they would have had far more uh, risk control, money management, and they would have been able to scale in to their positions. But you have to be a loser first. So what did I do? After having had an absolutely derisory time learning how to trade, I thought, I've got to stop. This is ridiculous. And I was very fortunate. Because I'd sold my magazines for a serious amount of uh, dosh in those days, and I was single in those days, I had time and I had money, and the losses really didn't hurt me at all. I mean, it was, it was my pride. It was, you know, I was educated well. I'm not stupid, but I couldn't believe how dumb this made me look. So I went off to the London Stock Exchange, and I went there every day for two weeks. I treated it as a job. And I went there, and in those days, you know, the, uh, the, the market even stopped at lunchtime. So I'd go out to lunch with the guys. I'd go out in the evening to the pubs with the floor traders to find out what they had and what I didn't have. And after a couple of weeks, I worked out. I found the missing link. You all know what the next slide's going to be. Because I found out their advantage. If you think of it, they have three things in the pit that you don't have at home. One is they have accountability. Now, I know that we all have accountabilities because we have partners and families in our lives and they all say, how are you doing? And you clench your teeth and you probably 
tell a little white lie and you say it's all well, it's all fabulous, it's going <laughs> terribly well, and you've just had an absolutely bugger of a day where it hasn't worked out for you, where you've sat there frozen in front of the screen and wondered why you didn't take this trade and why you didn't take that trade. When you're on the floor, accountability, you're employed. Somebody sees what you do every day. So, didn't have that, but I thought I could copy that a little bit by doing a computer program and starting to program stuff up because by this time, TradeStation had come in with super charts and, um, and, 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 uh, super charts is, uh, was the forerunner of TradeStation and they had easy language and, uh, and you could start, uh, programming stuff up. But more importantly, they have free money, which is the spread, which you can't replicate at home. Uh, they could feel the market. That was the key. They could feel the buying frenzies, the selling frenzies. And it's interesting, you know, we've got many, many, many hundreds of Hawkeye users around the world now. And I was speaking to some today. And they were saying, well, what markets do you trade? And I say, I don't have a set market to trade. I just look to where the feeding frenzies are. And the feeding frenzies are shown by volume. How many of you in the room go trading? Don't answer. But there'll be a lot of you that go uh, go fishing, rather. And if you go fishing, the first thing you do when you go out onto your boat on into the sea is to look around, put your binoculars on. Where are the where are the birds diving? Where are the seagulls? Because under the seagulls are the bait fish, and under the bait fish are the big fish. You can feel the markets exactly the same in the market. When you when you see the volume frenzies coming in, you can feel the market and which ways it's going to go, and that is volume. And it is the most important part of trading that you can find. So, having done that, I knew that volume is the key. So I started my journey on trying to understand volume. The king of volume is Richard Wyckoff. He was around in the 1930s. He was studied volume and price. Now, I find it fascinating, in the 1930s, we also had GAN, W.D. GAN, and also Elliot. They all came out of the 30s. But Wyckoff was my hero. So what did I do? I got on a plane. I found out that his family lived in, uh, in Phoenix, Arizona. I went over there. They had a small little uh, 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 printing company, really, I suppose it would be, in a, a small little uh, um, uh, shopping, shopping uh, center in Phoenix. I got the original course notes put them in a U-Haul trailer, sent them off to a packer, brought them back to England and started to devour them. So I got his original course notes, went through them, blah, 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 and started on his work. Then somebody hit me. And this was a huge cathartic experience. When this turned round and hit me, I thought, wow, you know, the opening price principle. And Standard volume spread analysis, as Wyckoff was doing, does not consider the open. And I thought, why was that? And then I worked out that the reason that nearly every, well, every volume spread analysis program out there, and there are a couple of others, do not consider the open, is because Wyckoff did. And Wyckoff didn't, because in that day and age that he was trading in the 30, the open was staggered. You'd have New York to Chicago to Kansas City to San Francisco, Los Angeles, across to Tokyo, down to Sydney, up to Singapore, back to London. Today, the S&P opens, everybody in the world at the same time sees the opening bid. And I thought, yeah. That is a bit that's really, really missing out of volume spread analysis. So I started, started to work on understanding what the spread is. And Hawkeye considers this as absolute paramount. Why? Because it's similar to an auction. What happens when you go to an auction? An auctioneer says, 100 bucks for this, no bidder. 90, 80, 70, 60, 50, 40, 30. 20. Gets down to 20, somebody puts their hand up. 
you know, I'll go 25, 30, 30, we'll probably get to 40, 45, and the hammer comes down. If he says 100, it goes to 80, and a bid immediately comes in, it's likely to go up to 140. So it's very similar to an auction. So we take into account that open. So we take in the equivalent, uh, uh, the open, the high, the low, and the close, and work it all out from there, because it sets the bias for the session. Each bar that comes in, and remember, the faster you get to the market, the less all indicators become stable, and that's why I try and get all Hawkeye users to breathe out a little bit to the market. You know, I've had, I say hundreds, probably a couple of thousand traders through uh, seeing me o over the years, and the big, big, I see two big uh, mistakes that most traders make. One is the time frame they choose to trade. And secondly, they can't hold into a trend. I won't digress into holding into a trend because we try and help you with that in, in Hawkeye. But choosing your time frame is the most important part of your trading decision. And nearly all traders, in my opinion, trade the wrong time frame. You, know, you haven't got enough money, so you try and trade fast, so you can earn money to go slow. Should be the other way around. Trade slow with smaller lot size, build that up and go faster and faster. You know, if you were learning to ride a horse, you wouldn't go into the Kentucky Derby straight off. You learn on a pony and nag, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yet as soon as you want to trade, you go into the S and P or into the Forex market on a five minute chart, which is the equivalent of the Kentucky Derby. You know, you, you've got to work it all, all out. But anyway, I'm digressing. Volume sets the bias for the session and you've really got to be good on that. So, and understanding that, and that's what we do, because understanding Hawkeye really, really, or Hawkeye volume will really give you the edge, because we do over 300 calculations per bar. I won't bore you, but it takes the open in relationship to the high and the low. It gives you standard deviation between the open and the high, standard deviation between the open and the close, standard deviation between the open and the close, and the close, and the high, and the low, etc. It does a very complex, and then looks at how much volume has gone through, and then gives you a thumbprint. We go back over weighting over 20 bars. We weight them in groups of five, and the last five is bar by bar. It is a highly complex uh, algorithm. So that's the end of the PowerPoint. I know that I've only got about another 20-odd uh, minutes, so I want to dive in and show you charts and take your questions so I can show you. Uh, I see that somebody called uh, Mr. Fisher or Shamil Fisher said examples. It's just what I'm coming to. So let me try and do this. Mm. I'm sorry about this, I'm technically challenged. And now let me just drag this into here. Can you all see my screen? I think that's done it. Randy, could you just send me a message on Skype yes, that you can see my charts, please? Right. So what I want to do here is just take you through, and again, Randy, if uh, uh, you could help me here. I don't want to show you charts of uh, markets that you don't trade. So what I'm going to do, Randy, is just keep my Skype screen open on another monitor. And if you could type into, into that other monitor, um, first of all, I'd like to run trading Forex, or is it trading stocks or ES? Could we just get a, a bit of a handle on, because I don't want to show chart after chart of Forex if it's mainly um, stocks and uh, the stock index 
indices and, and commodities stocks okay so stocks and forex so and futures futures being the es i presume randy yes yeah okay e-mini futures great so what i'm going to do here is just whip through quickly at the end of this presentation, like everybody who comes into my friends at uh, Traders Pub, I do have a special offer for you, and the special offer is going to be the Hawkeye volume, the Hawkeye radar, which produces these dots here, the Hawkeye pivots, which are these yellow dots here, and the Hawkeye wide bar. I have a special, very special offer for you that not only shows or, or uh, gives you these uh, indicators, but also access to a lot of other stuff. This indicator here is not included. Uh, it is a Hawkeye indicator. It's, it's called the Hawkeye um, Fat Man, and each currency is a different color. I'm not going to bore you with it, but it just tells me which currencies are strong, which currencies are weak. So it's a forex strength beta, but it's, uh, it's um, I think, it, well, I would say this. I think it's one of the best ones out there, if not the best one. So. I'm randomly picking up, and if you want me to look at um, any markets on Forex right now, please type in what market you want me to look at and what time frame you want me to look at. But whilst that is happening, I just want to show you exactly power of Hawkeye, and I'm just choosing this randomly. We can go over anything. Uh, what I put on this chart is, is a standard MACD. So you... Uh, uh, most people, it's the, it's the best indicator out of all the standard ones that I've seen that I actually like. So I just put it on because this is a standalone indicator, this, this Hawkeye indicator. But you can see that as the market comes down on a 15 minute here, you can see that the volume, which is this indicator here, goes white, 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 showing you no demand, no demand, no demand, no demand. A bit of buying comes in, buying comes in. Then a volume test comes in, then some buy, no demand, no demand, another little volume test, which is at lower volume than that one, so we know that it's not a sincere test. And then the buying comes in, and if you were using a MACD, it gave you the confirmation one bar before, boom, up it goes on a 15 minute. If you look over to the 30 minute, you can see that the volume had come in after no demand, two bars of no demand volume over here, that's the white, pushing it up, and then the green comes in. And if you looked at the 60 minute, you can see no demand, volume, a test, and then the green came in to give you that push up there. So by looking at the three volumes over here, you can see that all three have clicked in at this point, and it is a low risk entry. And that low risk entry would have taken you from an entry price of, I don't know, uh, 42.91 up to 43.13. So, you know, a nice little move. And I don't care, I'll, I'll randomly take anything that you'd like. I know that the Euro USD, let's look at some of the big ones. You can see again here, right down at the bottom, the MACD hasn't crossed standard technical analysis but the buying volumes come in the buying volumes come in telling you hey boys this is going you can see no come in on the 60 minute low risk entry and remember in trading all you are trading is risk you're not trading the euro usd you're not trading gold you're not trading crude you're trading risk what is the risk of this trade and unless you can work out the risk of the trade, you're stuffed. And you really got to look at it and understand what the volumes are doing to give you that edge. Um, let's look at a, anybody come in, Randy, with any currencies they want me to look at. And time, just type it into Skype if you can. Uh, let's New Zealand, US. Okay, so let's look at New Zealand, US. And have a look at that. Okay, USD yen. So let's look at that. Well, the, they wanted it on on a one hour. Okay, let me uh, just put this on one hour. So if we go one hour, sixty minutes, 
and then I always like 120 and 240 so I'm in harmony I want to be in harmony with the market so what's this telling me well you had shorts here but let's just look over here we can see that the market here on the volume has gone short and it's telling me that this volume has gone short the next bar over on the 120 is showing me no demand volume. And guess what else has happened? Something very important in Hawkeye. There's a little yellow dot there. There's a little yellow dot here. And there's a little yellow dot here. That's telling me that there is a pivot high that has come in. And pivot highs were three, five, seven time frames with you. So you go one, two, three down here. One, two, three, boom. And now it's pushing down. This will put in a little pivot low here, probably and push itself back up. But on our slowest time frame, on 240, we've got a pivot high here, pushing this down on no demand volume. So perfect. You immediately start looking to go short. Now you're not going to go short until you see red volume on your 240. If we look over here, uh, uh, I'm looking at a 60, so that's got to be a 180. Backband, this is not included in the offer I'm going to give you at the end of the day. So what we're looking at is the New Zealand, which is the dotted line here, and the US, which is the cyan line going up. The New Zealand is at an all-time oversold here as it's come up through, and it's just telling me it cannot continue. Now, it continues on up there, and we call that the tanker effort. You know the tanker effect? If you put the brakes on an oil tanker, it takes five miles to uh, stop. So if there's good market momentum, you'll see that the sell indicators come in showing you no demand on volume. The market will still go on. Price will still go on, but you know it's going to turn. And sure enough, you have the rollover here coming on back down. And the other one people want me to see is the Aussie yen. These are all the yen ones. Um, and you can see, look, you've got a nice double top here. Not only that, if you become a Hawkeye user, that little profile is very important because it's a left wing, right wing body of a bird coming into land. So we have that over here, left wing, right wing body coming into land. So this market is red volume coming in down here. We've got no demand volume on our slowest time frame. We've got red volume, no demand. Bias is to the downside, particularly if you have this indicator here. So that's that. Now, I know that I was late and I've only got another 15 minutes. Please, Randy, would you type in um, uh, and uh, tell me how much longer I've got because I don't want to run out of time and not show everybody. My favorite time frame by far would be the 360 minute on Forex. And, and oh, good, I've got. 26 minutes, that's fine. So um, on, on the Forex, I really love uh, 26 minutes. Uh, minutes. Um, I'll show crude in a moment. And you can see that this, I've got nothing but selling volume coming in all the way across the board. And this would have taken me down from here all the way down. And now I haven't put my money management on where I'd be taking my profits. But you can see I've got buying volume coming in here. So I'd be tightening up my stops, looking to take my profits, and then my D has crossed as well. So let me just move off on to crude. Now, I haven't got a crude, crude uh, uh, one open. Let me just try and pull up a crude quickly um, and immediately change it uh, for this presentation, uh, food pit up 24 hours. Or let's do intra time. And this chart will come up as a bad chart, so I'll immediately start cleaning it. So that's 360 minutes. Randy, what minutes do you want me to show? And I'll make this a crew chart. Randy, would you type in what, what uh, crew times you want? Not ask. Well, I don't want to be on 360, 7.20 if people want to be on 30s. Let me just do this. 
Okay, we can do that. That's easy. So. Fifteen, thirty, sixty. Just bear with me. Let me just make this at CL. There we go. Link this to another symbol. We have the same. And put a 15 up as well. And then I have to just clean this. It'll only take me a second to um, gives me 30, that gives me 16, 30. I'm going to show you Prude on another, and I think that will blow you away when I show it to you on that. Here we go. Is this for you? That indicator is not included in the package, which is the Hawkeye trend. Let me just remove that. Remove this. I know that you have your own indicators that you want to put up. I don't want to show you the whole Hawkeye suite. I'm showing you what the volume does. So you can see here that we have our volume coming in up here. You can see that there's selling volume coming in. You also have a nice double top here. You've got volume, red volume, pushing it down. You've got it here, you've got it on the 60 minutes. And if we come over here to our uh, uh, 30 minutes, rather, if you come over to our 60 minutes over here, you can see that we have the selling volume pushing itself down again. And right now, you have nothing that's selling going in. You've got a little price move that's come back up here. But if this bar here at the end of 15 minutes closes down, you're going to get another yellow Hawkeye pivot here, which is going to push it down and push it down underneath that low. So crude is going down. And these indicators here, which are included with the, with the package I'm going to offer you at the end, uh, Scion shows you ultra-light volume, yellow shows you high volume, and red shows you ultra-high volume. And that's not just running a moving average across. It's far more clever than that, and it just shows you whether there is selling volume or not, because you could say that bar there, for example, has given you high volume yellow, which were ultra high yellow volume. And you could say, well, they're the same height. Yeah, they might be the same height, but if you look at the market proceeding, it's not the same, because you're looking all the time and if you like the thumbprint, the DNA of the market, which, which this has. So there you have it. You can also see that something else happening. Pivot high, pivot high, lower than that one. Pivot high, lower than that one. Pivot high, lower than that one. Triple top coming in. Now if this closes down, you're going to get another pivot high, lower than that one. So that gives you an idea of looking at it on crude. Now I just want to show it to you on commodities. Uh, and I just need to put it up here. Two commodities, I think I put up. No. Uh, if I put my crude on this one, you will really see where we are. And let me just take this off because I don't want to. Oops. Okay, here we are. Look at this. We have on our monthly, 
which has just come in, we have one month of red selling volume there. Pivot high, lower than that pivot. Okay, going across, you could say that that is going up. But I would say also, you've got to look at market structure that I said first thing when I started this introduction. There you are, you've got volume coming in, no demand volume, then selling, selling coming down here. Look at that move, 74.29. Who would have believed that? So now when you come across here, you can just see at the same time when that's breaking down, you've got it all here. Now the closer you get to the market, the more noise you're going to get. But predominantly you are getting that all the time you're getting red volume. Now we've got a test volume that came in there, not elected. That bar was some buying volume that came in against the overall trend and you can see here on the daily we have nothing but selling volume that's gone on all week down here now hold on questions coming <laughs> okay vicky's asked a great question if traders trade the wrong time frame what is the right time frame i'll come on to that at the end um, and it really is a very important uh, uh, discussion and it's not really part of this presentation. Go and read Trading in the Zone by Mark Douglas. Vicky, that should be, if you haven't read that, that should be your Bible and it should be uh, 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 by the side of your bed. It is probably the Bible of understanding yourself in trading. We also have a, uh, a division of Hawkeye called Hawkeye Mindset. We've got a very clever PhD guy who trades. He actually uses Hawkeye and uh, he is a uh, psychiatrist, uh, psychologist rather, and he has developed a most robust system to understanding yourself and understanding your, your time frame. Uh, I'm digressing a little bit. You know, some athletes run marathons, some are sprinters, but nearly every trader wants to be a sprinter, and mentally they can't be. You have to find out what your personality is, and then find out what time frame to trade and uh, join Hawkeye, we help you do that through the Hawkeye mindset. But let me not digress. So here it is, looking down here, seeing what is happening. I want to show you what's happening in in, um, in gold as well. Oh, and then we'll get on to some stocks for you. This is the gold mining index. So these are the big, this is the uh, ETF of the gold mining shares, as you can see all the way down but we're now getting right down here we get coming in we got no demand on our weekly that came in on high volume and we've got high volume and no demand coming in at the end of this month also if this continues on the monthly it could be a wonderful opportunity never hear or see from me again but just look at gold at the end of this at the end of this month if you get the volume deal that i'm going to show you you're going to be wanting to watch gold because this is looking like a major, major uh, point of accumulation right now. And if we go in, into the actual gold price, you can see that that's being mirrored as well. No demand, no demand, no demand buying. A classic bottom formation. Buying coming in, buying, selling, selling, buying. Classic bottom formations coming in here. Anyway, let me just move on and show you some stocks before I run out of time. Um, write in whether people want to see stocks daily or whether they want to see them intraday. And then I shall... Okay. Well, I'm going to show you, I'm really going to show you something that I'm very, very proud of. And this is Netflix. And this will show you the power of the Hawkeye algorithm. Netflix had a cracking gap down here on the daily. The reason being that some of the uh, uh, cable stations said that they were going to do 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 some technology that competed with Netflix. So what happened? Big gap down. 
What did Hawkeye say? Look, Hawkeye didn't say that was selling. Hawkeye said, no demand, no demand. I was a market maker's markdown. It wasn't selling. Look over on the weekly. One, two, three weeks of no demand selling. Okay, on the monthly, we haven't finished the monthly yet, but the monthly came up then. That was selling. So the market cracked down here. Now look what's happened. We've had a little bit of buying come in. We've had a little bit of buying, one bar of testing to the downside on red volume. Yesterday, no, uh, we're getting another bar of testing volume. All you have to do is just take your line across the Hawkeye pivots. And for any of you who are trading this on a daily or a longer term, basis. That price there, if it's taken out, watch out. I don't know when I can see that. There we go. No. I don't know what that price is, but you can see that uh, level there. should be able to do that. There we go. 375, 374, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, if it gets through there, watch out. Now, just one of the other little things I want to tell you is that when you get support and resistance, and you can say that this line here is support and resistance, do not consider it as an iron bar. Consider it as an elastic band. So. It could be bent down to there, and I would still consider that that resistance is being held. I want to see no bar, part of the bar, touching it. For example, here, when you do your analysis, those pivots there are holding all the way across here. That bar is above the pivot, but it's below. It's just bent it. And you see you could draw a line above it. That is the resistance that held these market moves. Now you've got a double top here, going to push down. This is going to come down, test at least 50% of the range of that wide bar. The magenta bar, which is part of the package I'm going to give you, is a wide bar. It shows me twice average true range over 20 bars. And that's very important. Most bars close within the range of that. So down, close within the range. Down, close just in the range. And you'll see it time and time again that that happens. So that is the analysis on that. Let me go and have a look at some others. Um, Randy, any stocks coming? Let's look at Apple, the most widely held stock. Widely held stock in, uh, in America. Let's look at that. So here we go. We got buying volume all the way through here on the monthly. We got buying volume all the way through here with a couple of volume tests to the downside, but the majority, 90% all the time buying volume. Look at something else that's happening. Pivot low, pivot low, higher than that one. Pivot low, higher than that one. Pivot low, higher than that one. Look at this. Pivot low, higher than that one there, which is called a phantom if you join Hawk. I will teach you about this. And you can see that you've got the green volume here pushing that all the way up. What a lovely buy that is. That's 13 bucks virtually from there to there. And before I, I've only got about 10 minutes to go. Any stocks that anybody particularly wants to see, Randy? I'm just going to show you stocks in. What? What's that one? Hold on. EDD. Okay, can't do more. Thanks for putting it in caps, Randy. He knows that I wear glasses. So. Let's go back and put in DDD. Uh, we'll just have a look at that very quickly, and then I want to move off because I haven't got much time. Oops. EDD, I think that's a, a company I know. How funny. 
Australia, based in Santa Monica, and uh, and uh, uh, is run by a guy called Chris Udall, I think. Anyway, let's have a look at that. I wouldn't. Uh, uh, if you're short, great. If you're long, you're hurting. All the volumes are there, telling you to the downside. You can just see that all the way through. You know, no demand, no. No demand up move. If it's the DDD, they probably came up and said something was happening with Samsung. It didn't move up, and now it cracked on down. Look, total, this is going uh, down. It'll come down and test. And if you're a fit person, you put your fit numbers on to see what that is. But it's certainly come down to 50% of that run up there. Would uh, if you've got that in 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 your uh, if you're short, congratulations. If you're long, don't pull yourself a stiff, stiff scotch. Um, Randy, I want to move on. So I just want to go on to stocks intraday so we can see what's happening on stocks intraday. And it's exactly the same uh, process as I told you. You can see that the 60 minutes here is telling you short. The 120 minutes is telling you short. The daily is telling you short. You've got a pivot low, uh, a pivot high that's come in, pushing down. It's exactly the same. I particularly like in Hawkeye is ticks. And we've come up with, uh, it took me five years and three programmers to come up with this, which tells me the tick speed of charts. I like ticks. I don't want to see something, what happens in time. I want to see what happens in ticks. You know, that's market momentum blah, 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 pushing it forward. So each day, this will tell me what speed to trade the market. So this is telling me 2680, 3406.70 is telling me what to trade the market each day. This tells me my volume. My volume is telling me to the upside here, I get that nice move, you know, uh, uh, nearly a buck up if I'm trading uh, um, intraday. No demand here, no demand here. Thank you, exit. And I'll just move on to one other before I just wrap all this up and show you stock indexes very, very quickly. You can see exactly the same comes through on Netflix. Netflix is telling me that my slowest time frame should be 256. Look, from this indicator here, how would you like to own that and then know each day how to be in harmony? Who oh, has this apart from us? And now I'm going to 64. Okay, this is really telling me how to trade this market. And you can see from today, from uh, the open of the day, there's the open of the day. The sell-off came in. Here's the volume coming down. Volume on the red time frame. Volume on the faster time frame. You know, that's the end of it. Learn how to do it. And e -mini, there's the e-mini time, 5, 15, 20. This indicator here is just telling me what all the um, uh, uh, issues, uh, stocks on the New York uh, stock, the NASDAQ and, and the uh, Russell are doing all the time. So it's telling me that the stocks are being sold off there and they're being bought here. That gives me, again, market structure and shows me. But what's more important is when we come over to the tick charts, this tells me day in, day out, what tick speeds to trade. 4384, 2192, 1096. Tells me, trade this. Trade these, these in harmony. I'm not going to, I don't have time to tell you all about this, but it's, it's this. Look. No. Here's the yellow chart telling me, take this over here, boom, up it goes. Everything's in order, bang, up it goes. So that's what I'm looking at, and that's Hawkeye. Now, I just want to carry on with this because I'm going to run out of time. Um, So just to wrap this all up for you, I've got to tell you, it's taken me 20 years of research to do this. 
It's a sophisticated way of trading the market. Do this, excuse me, I'm always technically challenged. Bear with me, everybody. You're going to be excited in a minute. It, sh it shows you how to perceive your charts, where to place your trades, the profits you make, how to protect your profits, etc. I'm getting challenged here, Randy. Can't get this to work. Start this again. Yeah, then I can't get another slide to come up. That's my problem. Let's see if I can scroll it down here. Okay, let's just go to the special. Forget the rah rah introduction. What I'm going to do is this. You're going to get the volume indicator, which is worth 360 bucks. That includes the wide bar, the pivots, the radar. It also includes the, uh, the volume as a paint bar, uh, which you can put on, on your price. Now, this is I've never done before. You get price to the monthly meetings that we have for Hawkeye traders. It gives you access to the members area. On the members area, there is tons, and I mean tons of stuff of education on learning how to trade. You get access to the weekly trading rooms. Now, the training room, every Wednesday, my colleague Randy, who is in the room now, runs a volume room on a Wednesday, showing you how to use this indicator that we're going to sell you. And understanding volume and then putting the other layers of Hawkeye on it and you can also have access to the daily Skype room where there are other hundreds of other Hawkeye users in there talking to each other. That's $97. That's what we're going to do. And Randy, are you posting that in the room? Could you just confirm that you're posting the link in the room? And we've post, posted the link in the room where you can buy this. So for $97, you get the volume indicator, which has the Hawkeye pivots. The Hawkeye wide bar, it has the Hawkeye paint bar to go on to your price if you so want it, and it has the very important Hawkeye volume. You have access to our mentoring, our, um, our monthly mentoring. It gives you access to the members areas to download all the education uh, that we have. You can come into the weekly training rooms. There's a weekly training room on a Wednesday. And on Thursday, Randy, who is a terribly competent trader, trades live in front of you, trading the ES crude stocks, whatever he sees, and that starts up uh, at 8 a.m. Eastern. And you have access to the daily Skype room. It's available in TradeStation, Ninja, MT4, eSignal, Multicharts. And it's a hell of a deal, 97 bucks. That's less than a dinner for two at Longhorn Steakhouse with a decent bottle of red. So that's the end of my presentation. I hate sounding like a car salesman, and I hope I have, and I hope I've infused you, and I've opened your eyes to absolutely understanding that if you don't have volume, you're lost. If you have volume, you have the compass that will take you through the forest. So thank you all very much for coming and listening to me. I'm sorry that I was challenged uh, uh, with the technology. And I wish you great fortune in your trading. So thank you all very, very much indeed for coming.